Good evening. I'd like to call the December 17, 2018 meeting of the University Heights City Council to order. Mrs. Thomas, will you call the roll? Mr. Roth? Here. Mr. Wagner? Here. Mr. Sims? Mrs. Pardee? Here. Mr. Ertle? Mrs. Cameron? Present. Mrs. Wise? Here. Is there a motion to excuse Mr. Sims and Mr. Ertle? So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Mrs. Wise, second by Mr. Wiseman. Uh, if there is no discussion, Mrs. Thomas, will you call the roll? Mr. Roth? Aye. Mr. Wiseman? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Wise? Aye. Okay, very good. Will all those who are able please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the first order of business is the approval of minutes. Uh, there were some minutes from the December 3rd meeting that were distributed. I hope everyone has had an opportunity to look at them. Uh, if uh, you have, then hopefully there will be a motion at this juncture. Mayor, I move approval of the minutes. Okay, we have a- the December 3rd minutes. Yes, yes, we have a motion to approve the December 3rd, 2018 minutes. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Okay, if there is none, then uh, Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mr. Rott? Aye. Mr. Wiseman? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Wise? Aye. Okay, we're now at the portion of the meeting where we accept comments from the audience. Speakers are limited to five minutes for a total time allowed of 15 minutes. Uh, if there's anyone who would care to address the city, uh, if you would do so now, please come to the podium, speak into the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Thank you. My, my name is Kate Euler. I've been here before. I've lived in University Heights since 1964. I live on Fenwick Road right now. And I have two questions. Uh, one of them is uh, we're still waiting for uh, some comments, some relief for the tax relief that you promised on your in your campaign literature, that's one way to get elected is promise tax relief to the voters. And the secondly, uh, I, I filed a FOIA request, and it's very interesting. The FOIA request, I filed many of them for my clients, and I never paid more than five cents a page. Uh, I got information from the Department of Ohio, the Department of Commerce, and their guidelines for a FOIA request is five cents a page. And uh, the city charged me 25 cents a page. So I'm waiting for a refund on that. You know, it's Christmas time. Grandma's got 11 grandkids. <laughs> so I'm saying that I want my refund. So thank you. Okay. First I was aware. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would care to address the city at this point? Good evening. Good Council evening, Mr. Ganner, President, Local 974. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to let um, all of you know that uh, I'm very proud to say uh, Caleb Schuster, who is one of our firefighters, your firefighters, uh, received an award um, earlier this year. In June, I believe, we submitted um, his video that um, was used to assist um, in the election campaign last year. and. Um, Chris Kalo, our secretary, uh, suggested that we submit that to the IAFF for their uh, media awards contest. And I'm proud to say that uh, Caleb received first place internationally. Wow. And um, this was the uh, Reaching New Heights, if any of you saw that, uh, the video that starred the mayor and um, Kalo's uh, video um, abilities. So um, there was a lot of work that he put into it. On behalf of the International, they gave him um, first prize received $500, um, a plaque which is forthcoming, and a very nice t-shirt that has a <laughs> emblem on it that uh, shows he's a winner, which is, this is the, the emblem they're using for media awards. Kind of oh, tough to see. Nice. Maybe you want to so um, I just wanted to uh, acknowledge his hard work and dedication. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that did a lot of good work and hard work, and I think Caleb deserves uh, 
his the oh. acknowledgement of that. So no, that thank is you. fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Is there anyone else who would care to address the city this evening? If so, please come forward now. All right. If there is no one else, then uh, we will move on to reports and communications from the mayor and the taking of action. I would like to start out, well, I will start out this evening by talking about leaf collection. For the last 22 days straight, and for 31 of the last 36 days, our leaf crews have been out collecting leaves. And I know that there are some streets that have not been visited in weeks. I don't think I can repeat enough that the leaves fell very late this year. And everyone should remember how warm it was well into October and then how quickly snowy weather came. We didn't really have a proper fall this year in Northeastern Ohio. Now I grant that the staffing has not been consistent throughout the season. Some days we've had three crews on leaf pickup. Some days like today, as few as one crew. But over the weekend with three crews on Saturday and two on Sunday, we got sections done of Washington, Fenwick, Glendon, Hillbrook, Dysart, Chiney, Fenwick, Silsby, Jackson, Cedarbrook, Tullamore, and Farland. We are studying these issues and looking for a way to make it better for next year. One resident, who shall go unnamed, pithily observed that with the amount of taxes we pay, we should be exempt from the effects of global warming. <laughs> and while there is nothing we can do directly to ensure a proper fall season, we can see if there are other ways we can be more efficient and encourage more efficient behavior. For instance, residents are always free to bag their leaves. It is extra work. I didn't do it either. But bag leaves will be picked up faster than the leave crews can work. For the record, my leaves have been on my tree lawn since the weekend before Thanksgiving, and they are still there. <laughs> Let it be known that my block has not had any sort of preferential treatment. But I would ask our residents once more while you are always welcome to call City Hall, we get dozens of calls, even just today, about the leaves. And my advice once again is to put them out, don't wait, and we will get to you when we can get to you. The leaf removal is not a weekly service, but it is a seasonal service, and we will get to everyone by the end of the season. And if for some reason we don't, well then we'll be back out in the spring. <laughs> Since the last council meeting, we had a building committee meeting with residents to collect input regarding rental homes in our U1 and U2 districts as we continue to overhaul our rental registration program. We had excellent turnout for the meeting with homeowners and tenants and landlords all in attendance. Mr. Wiseman will surely uh, get more into that in his report. We had a governmental affairs meeting to discuss uh, updating our no smoking ordinances, primarily to explore but not limited to, raising the age to 21 for the sale and use of tobacco and vaping products. And I'm sure uh, Councilwoman Weiss will uh, get into more of that as that's her committee. And the Mayor's Advisory Committee on creating a neighborhood dispute resolution process did meet and shortly into the new year, we should have a draft framework of what the process might look like. We wanna find a way to handle disputes between neighbors peacefully, respectfully, and sensitively avoiding the escalation that comes with litigation and at times uh, law enforcement. I'd like to thank resident Justin Gould, especially for his ongoing work on this. Due to some last minute scheduling conflicts that were unavoidable, the first organizational meeting of the UHCIC has been postponed and will be rescheduled after the first of the year. Looking to the new year, the first council meeting of the new year will be Monday, January 7th. I will deliver my first State of the City address on Wednesday, February 13th at 7 p.m. This will be at the Jardine Room at John Carroll University. That's the room where we have the Civic Engagement Awards. And I will review our achievements from 2018 and set forth what we hope to accomplish together in 2019. Finally, with Christmas a week from tomorrow, I would like to note that City Hall and administrative offices will be closed at noon on Monday, December 24th 
It closed on Tuesday, December 25th. And then on Monday, December 31st, City Hall and administrative offices will be closed at noon and not reopen until January 2nd, 2019 at 8 a.m. To borrow the words of Connie Schultz, I wish you happy holidays, plural, to those who celebrate. And to all of you who are struggling this time of year, may the season land gently. Thank you. This concludes my report. First item on the agenda is the presentation by Kathy Fromet of Guide Studio on signage and wayfinding analysis, a proposal in conjunction with the new city brand. So, um, Kathy, you have the floor. Thank you. You guys can pass that out. That's just an overview of what the process is. And I do have a few examples here. I will have to collect these back. You can keep those. Um, but these are an example of what the analysis Yeah, uh, if you have any extra that maybe some Just folks in the... Sure. Yeah. Extras. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good idea. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So, as all of you know, um, you have now embarked in launching your new brand. And um, part of that process, too, is, is understanding some of the different ways um, that this brand can be implemented over time. And one of them, and this is actually one of the goals that came out of the branding and wayfinding, or the brand strategy and development process, was how can we make people more aware um, that they are, are actually arriving into University Heights? Because we know that all of our communities between Clearman Heights and South Euclid and University Heights and Shaker and Beechwood, um, we're all very close knit. Uh, there is a lot of residential boundaries, so sometimes you don't know when you are in one place or another. And um, as a point of pride, you want people to know that you have arrived um, in University Heights. You want to know people to know what amenities are part of your city, and um, that is what signage and wayfinding is for. Um, Guide Studio. Uh, has been working on signage and wayfinding programs for communities all across Ohio and beyond. And uh, many times we do a pretty large scale um, signage and wayfinding master plans. We really reserve these for cities that have a high degree of visitor destinations. Um, and we've found that for doing them for smaller communities, even though you do have visitor destinations within your city, um, it's an overkill process and it's not something that we would recommend you do. Um, instead, what we're proposing is what we call a signage and wayfinding analysis. We are pretty familiar with your city, but this is our opportunity to understand how people are moving around and navigating. Where are they entering? What are the major points of entry? Not every single point of entry, but what are the major points of entry? Um, what are the different contexts that people see when they come into those entry points? Because not one sign fits all for, for every community because um, one sign might look great on a, a two-lane road. On a wider lane road, you'll never see it. <laughs> it's just not going to be right for that size. So this analysis allows us to go through and understand how people are coming into the community or navigating the community to major assets and um, identifying those points of entries that you really want to create that sense of welcome. And the report also um, goes on to help you understand what that investment can be um, if you are looking to change out your sign program. Um, because it is an investment. It's not the same as doing uh, a large scale streetscape project, um, but it is something that most communities that we work with um, typically don't always have the funding to do it in one fail swoop. <laughs> so um, the plan does help you understand what that investment can look at like over time. Through this report, we also recommend implementation. So we identify the priorities for how you should roll out this program. We use historical budget numbers from projects that we've done in other communities so that you can understand the cost ranges um, for, for different aspects of design. Um, 
the other nice thing about this report is if you were to go after any grant funding, so if you were looking at CBDG, is that right, or TLCI type programs to wrap it in, you would have that information already in place and it's actually a great supplement to going after grant funds for this type of work. So that is what we're proposing. Um, the mayor typically, um, when we do these for communities, it's usually because they're coming to us and saying, we don't even know where to start, but we, we know that we want to do this and, and, and we need this. So the analysis is the first thing we recommend. Um, in your case, to move it a little further, we have included um, the option of doing conceptual design with that so that you can actually begin to see what the signs might look like. It will allow us to get tighter with the budget numbers as well. Okay, very good. Thank you, Ms. Froman. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Mr. Wiseman. Uh, thank you, and thank you for the work that you've done with us. I really appreciate it. Um, so this is in addition to the contract that we have now. Correct. Okay. And we had talked, um, I think before the process started, maybe maybe even a couple years ago when we, we had first talked about um, splitting the city into quadrants conceptually and coming up with different um, uh, different ideas Again. for people en entering into the city. Is that something that this would uh, That would be part of the analysis as well. The analysis isn't just identifying points where you know people are coming in. It's really understanding how and, and what you want to do from the welcoming standpoint. So it includes recommendations. So there is, you know, just as you went through with the branding process, there is a, a time where we sit down and we talk to you about what your goals are so that we understand what you want to do, and that gets wrapped into the analysis that we provide. Mm -hmm. so. And um, I'm assuming this would include some type of meetings with the businesses in the city and Anybody for that meeting, we would recommend that um, you bring some people to the table for that initial. We also do include, um, there is an electronic survey that is done with this, um, and it's specifically to ask questions around issues of how people are finding them, um, just to see if there are some wayfinding issues. It's not that you can put individual businesses on wayfinding signs. Most cities do not allow that. Mm -hmm. um, it is not just, it, you don't want to do that because they, they come and go too often. But um, there's other things that can be done to support wayfinding in an area where a lot of businesses congregate. So we do ask questions, we do want it to go and we want to engage with um, a variety of institutions to understand um, what some of those issues might be. And uh, as you said, this is a pretty small city. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not sure wayfinding is, is the right. concern. I'm thinking, I'm thinking more along the lines of sort of um, uh, identity and accessibility, kind of public awareness kind right. of thing. And that's why we call it a <laughs> signage and wayfinding analysis. So really, I mean, the idea of entry is part of the wayfinding vernacular. So even how people move, the, how people move through the city is really what we're looking for. Um, and if we find that a place does have a lot of assets and amenities that those from outside might be trying to get to, and we're seeing that they're, they're congregating at different decision points, that's when we understand that maybe you do need some wayfinding, not a lot. Um, but it is possible, and that's why we do, we recommend the analysis for a lot of smaller communities is because they will come to us and say, we need wayfinding when really they, they really want gateway signs and, and some other things to create more of a sense of place. Um, and this is just a smaller effort without going through the bigger master planning efforts that we do for larger cities um, that will allow us to answer those questions and identify the, the elements that we think would serve you well. I, I appreciate it. I, 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 I think you guys do great work and it's nice to, to be able to sort of think in these terms. Uh, for the city, uh, just from a personal standpoint, I think, um, I think at least my idea, I don't know whether we've talked about this openly uh, uh, on council, but I think the idea is that if we sort of create an identity and, and sort of areas for the merchants to sort of get together, then maybe they can sort of take it at that point, maybe make a merchants association, maybe sort of think to themselves collectively sort of how they can, how they can change things and how they can move forward kind of thing. Interesting you should say that because there are other, um, in, in some communities that we've gone into and they've come to us mainly for this place identity and this place making type of vision for their community. Other things that we look at too is um, your sign zoning codes and how um, you know private entities, you know, what are they allowed to do? Um, there's, there's a lot of 
you can't do too many restrictions now. There's some, some rules that have gone in place, but there are some design guidelines that also help create sort of that quality and character that you want to have represented in your city. And um, some recommendations might be around making some changes in your codes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, I appreciate it. Thank you, thanks for your time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Weiss and Mrs. Weiss. Oops, thank you. Nice seeing you again, first of all. Nice to see you. Um, I know that we were all very happy with, with the work that you did, and I know um, we kind of had a few little hiccups where you, you actually spent more time and, and helped us with our, with our logo. Um, so this signage and wayfinding analysis is 16.5, is that correct? No, it's 10 total if you do concepts. Oh, it's 10 total. Mm -hmm. So it's not because it's yeah. at 16.5. Yeah, it's 10 Six, total. 5 yeah. on top and then 10 yep. Okay, yep. so it's 10 total. And does that include also maybe banner placements and, and things like that, not just the major signs? It's not just the major signs. So when we look at and that's why we call it an analysis, because sometimes we think, you know, in, in my opinion, and we've done this in a lot of communities, uses of banner and banner placements do create sense of arrival and gateway. Mm -hmm. And so we'll want to look at that to see if that's part of it. So really, if you look at any of these analysis reports, there's a few different things that we recommend for those communities and in terms of what they look for. So we're going to look at the array of things. Um, and we're going to look at it from cost differentials too. So implementing a banner program to help begin to create that sense of arrival is going to be a lot less costly than if you're going to start putting in signs. So we're going to look at a variety of options and make recommendations. Okay, and I also way. appreciate the fact when you spoke about zoning codes mm -hmm. because that's something that I know in the next year or so that the administration is going to start working on because yeah. we have we're going to need some updating on that. Yeah, we've. Um, We've worked with a few cities um, recently where, I mean, if you've read the zoning codes, <laughs> I mean, it's legalese for, for something that, in a sense, you do want to have some level of creativity and quality, and sometimes that doesn't translate. So um, there are ways to supplement those codes with some quality specifications um, just to provide some guidance to those, but being careful that we are not putting limitations on what signs say, because there are some rulings now that um, that allow you not to do that, so. Okay. All right, well, thank you, Mrs. Weiss. Does anybody have any further questions? Uh, Mr. Rock. Yes, thank you for coming in. Uh -huh. I love the new logo, I just love it. Oh, and so I talked to a lot of people throughout the city and they love it, and I tell them the story. The fact that it has a story to tell, <laughs> it really, really goes a long way. I'm so glad. So it, it is what we like seeing. seeing. Um, I see there's, so there is two prices in here. I, I prefer the one with the concept design included because I, again, I want to see how our logo plays in the greater field of what right. you're doing. So. That's, that's why I included that option because you're so new and, and fresh with your new identity and I think that's part of your excitement is right. to see how that's going to translate. Again, when we do this work for a lot of communities, it may not, it may, we haven't done branding work with them. They're just looking to see what they can do um, from, you know, understanding what they could do with signage and wayfinding in their community. So we start with that smaller effort, but I would recommend um, Absolutely. If, you're, if you're ready to move forward with something in the next year that you would do the conceptual design. Right. So I am in favor of that because we do have the design of the logo and, the, and our brand identity has been. We have a little concept started too. Oh good. Oh, well. <laughs> so I think it was included in the in the presentation. So. Okay, yeah. good. So that's just my two cents that I would like to see that we can go with the, the other option that has the concept included. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Rock. Does anybody else have any questions for Ms. From it. Pam, it looked like you had something. Oh, I don't have a question, but I will make a comment. All right. I am the, one of those holdout type people. Mm -hmm. I had grown fond of the door knocker over <laughs> the years. It had a great significance to me. Uh, and, well, in a strange kind of way, it, it was a signal to many African American people who joined, who came to the city. It was a symbol of having arrived. So to do away with it mean, means what? 
at that point to people who have come to identify with the door knocker. However, times do change, and I've been persuaded that um, I need to change with the times. Therefore, I began to give some thought to your little door knocker thing. I mean, excuse me, to the new signage and the new symbol. But I tell you what really made me love it was the inspiration that the UH came into the point. At that point, I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think it was an inspired, creative aspect. And it, it just genu genuinely makes it stand out. So therefore, I'm your girl now. Good, good. I'll tell you, when we were working through a lot of different options <laughs> in, in our office, when this one came through, I mean, I, I lived in South Euclid, so I, this was still my area too. When that one came through, I, I said, that, that's, that's it. it. <laughs> that's yeah. the one. So that's um, it was really exciting when you guys picked that one. So yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. All Thanks. right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just, just for the record, I, I do support our, our, our uh, engaging guide um, on this proposal. Um, oh, sure, sure. And, and uh, you know, uh, it, it would be easy to say, oh, of course we need new signs and we should get some banners, but, but these things are expensive. We want to make sure we do it sensibly, and, and this, I think, is, would be money well spent making sure that we go about this in a, in a reasoned and thoughtful and methodical manner. And I would also add that, that I finally made it over to the west side and saw the banners uh, over by Edgewater, which I understand Guy designed, and they're, they're, uh, they're, they're beautiful. They're distinctive and they're sharp, and I am looking forward to something at least that good here in University Heights. And in fact, you know, even better, because <laughs> it'll be ours. <laughs> All right, so thank you. So um, thank you for coming in. The next item on the agenda is the motion to approve signage and wayfinding analysis proposal and to authorize the mayor to enter into contract. Um, we just heard from Guide Studio. Uh, there were a couple of figures that were proposed, 6,500 for the wayfinding analysis and report, or combine that with concept design and have that be 10,000. Um, while on one hand that number is within the mayor's spending authority, on the other hand we've already engaged guide and this council has been close to the process with regard to creating this logo and it made far more sense on several levels that this wouldn't be just something that, that administration would do unilaterally but rather this would be a decision that we made together, especially since uh, we did previously um, uh, agree uh, together to engage guide uh, on the main project. So uh, my recommendation, and I would seek a motion for the 10,000 for wayfinding analysis and report with concept design included, that would be both my ask and my recommendation. So if there's a motion or if there's discussion. I'll make the motion, Mayor, and I, I have to say I want to thank you because this is below your spending authority, but your, your transparency and your ability to collaborate with our council here is just, it's, it's profound, and I, I really appreciate that you bring this before us. Um, it's special because we've been a part of the process from the beginning, mm -hmm. so I want to thank you for that. Thank but yeah, you. I will make a motion to approve the signage and wayfinding analysis proposal um, with the design concept included and to authorize the mayor to enter in a contract uh, not to exceed $10,000. Okay. Second. Very good. Motion by John Rock, second by, uh, by uh, Mr. Wiseman. <laughs> Mr. Rock. <laughs> okay. Is there any discussion? Very good. Um, Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Wiseman? Aye. Mrs. Perdue? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Wise? Aye. Okay. Very good. Motion carries. Uh, next is item C, motion appointing Councilman John Rock as Council's Planning Commission Liaison and Councilman Mark Wiseman as alternate. Uh, will you be speaking to this, Mrs. Mayor? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Every two years, the Vice Mayor um, 
organizes council. Council is charged with organizing itself and according to our administrative code, the vice mayor um, appoints council people to committees as chairs and to boards and as liaisons. We're in and off here, but I was made aware that a couple of council people wanted to make some changes. So at this point, we would like to, and I would urge council to approve appointing John Rock as the planning commission liaison and making Mark Weisman the alternate. Mark was the liaison, but has asked to step down given time constraints, I believe. So. <laughs> We're making that change um, as long as it's approved. And then next year, we'll be on the regular schedule. In January, the next vice mayor will go ahead and appoint new people. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mrs. Pardee. Are there any questions or discussion? Mr. Wiseman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, yes, I, I I asked to rotate off of the uh, of the Planning Commission. Not that it it has been in my honor to, to be on the Planning Commission for the past couple of years. I'm going to be on the CIC now, so it's going to be going to have a lot more a uh, lot more of my time uh, spoken for. And uh, I think it's a perfect time for Mr. Rock. Come on, he has uh, he has great ideas. He has what I think you need to be on the Planning Commission, which is a longtime resident and an eye for uh, architecture. Uh, and for the way the city's designed, I think he's perfect. His skills are are, uh, uh, are really good for this. I'm glad that he's here to uh, to take my place on the planning commission. Thank you, Mr. Wise. So, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion appointing Councilman John Rock as Council's planning commission liaison, and Councilman Mark Weisman is the alternate. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, motion by Mrs. Pardee, second by Mrs. Cameron. Is there any discussion? I just want to thank you for your uh, encouragement and your and your trust in me to do this role. Um, I've always wanted to be on the planning commission. It's kind of a dream job, I guess. You know, as an architect, uh, and we're, we're going to have a meeting soon. Oh, good, good. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you for uh, for encouraging me to do that. Very good. It's always nice to make somebody's dreams come true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Very good. Is there anything further? Okay, very good. Mrs. Thomas, will you call the roll? Mr. Wright? Aye. Mr. Wiseman? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Uh, aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Very good. Motion carries. Uh, next is uh, Resolution 2018-74, Approving Financing from Leasing to Inc. for the Acquisition of the New Ladder Truck for the Fire Department. This is on emergency. Um, uh, just for a message from uh, from Mr. Goff. Uh, this is part of the documentation. This resolution is part of the documentation required by Leasing to Inc. for the financing of the 2019 Sutphin Heavy Duty 100 foot mid mount aerial ladder for the fire department, which this council previously approved. However, <clears throat> the leasing to requirements, there is a particular resolution with particular language that they would like to see. And uh, this is uh, the resolution before you, 2018-74, is uh, uh, basically what something, or, or rather leasing two, is looking for with respect to what kind of resolution that they would want from council. It has a little bit more than what we previously approved. So, so uh, it may be a little more form over substance, but this is a matter of, of giving leasing to the resolution uh, they need to finish the credit application. So, if there are any questions or comments, Mr. Weiss. Uh, just a couple of questions, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, uh, so we're this is going to arrive at the beginning of 2020. Is that correct? Uh, approximately. I mean, this is a 10 to 12 month build, I believe. Yes. Sure. I mean, it, unfortunately, it's not like buying a Kia. We we they build each one to spec, so there isn't a lot where we just drive one home. Uh, if only we could. <laughs> But then again, we're going to get exactly what we want, which is also you know, important. And our but first yes, payment will be, I believe, also after delivery. The also, of that's what I understand. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Very good. Uh, any other questions? Is there a motion? 
Mayor, I'd like to move um, that council approve the financing from leasing two for the acquisition of the new ladder truck for the fire department on emergency. Well, approve the resolution, you mean? Approve the resolution. Okay. And do we need the dollar amount? Um, Luke, would that be a wise thing to include? Well, in the amount not to exceed $1,310,000. Well, that's the principal amount. Oh, the principal, which yeah. Which is how it's stated right. in the resolution. That's the only number in there, so? Yes. No number. <laughs> Well, I mean, we're passing the resolution, so the resolution probably speaks for itself with regard to the number. Plus, we've previously passed a number that has both the principal amount and the projected finance charge. So I think we're yeah. This is the contract, recovered. right? This isn't the appropriation, right? Yeah. So this is fine. Okay. okay. Good. Very good. Okay. Second. Second. So we have a motion by Mrs. Party on emergency and a second by Mr. Wiseman. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we will vote first on the suspension of the rules. Um, Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll on that. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Wiseman? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Wise? Aye. And on the main motion? Mr. Rock? Aye. Mrs. Wiseman? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Wise? Aye. Very good. Uh, the resolution passes. Uh, next is item E, ordinance. 2018-75 uh, supplemental appropriation funds for current and other expenditures of the City of University Heights, Ohio for the period commencing January 1, 2018 and ending December 31st, 2018 on emergency. Uh, comments from Mr. Goff. And, and just for the benefit of anyone who wasn't aware here at the meeting, uh, Mr. Goff had foot surgery uh, in late November. He is still healing from that and is required to stay off his foot and uh, it is not really possible for him to be up the steps and here on the second floor of this building so he is not here this evening but his comments on this uh, ordinance 2018-75 reduces previously approved appropriations because the total of the previously approved 2018 appropriations for the respective fund exceed the total the sum total within the respective fund of 2018 revenue and the 2018 starting carryover fund balance. This appropriation is necessary for final appropriations with a respective fund to not exceed available resources within the respective fund. Is, is that all the way of saying we sp we're spending $744,000 less than we had anticipated when we set the 18 budget? I, I believe what he's saying is that there are certain categories of expenses where amounts were appropriated that were not spent. But, so it, it, it's not necessarily the same thing as saying you haven't spent the amount of money that you budgeted to spend. You may have spent less in certain categories, but more in others. Okay, but with respect to these particular fund balances listed, that is what he's saying. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. That was a very challenging piece to understand. It's more or less straightening out the budget at the end of the year, so everything looks positive. There are no negative balances, I believe. It's a housekeeping, tidying up. Housekeeping. End Today. of inquiry. <laughs> Good question. Yes. Yes, it is. Are there any other questions or comments on this? And if not, is there a motion? So moved. On emergency? On emergency. Very good. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion on emergency to adopt the ordinance by Mrs. Wise, second by Mr. Wiseman. Any further discussion? If not, Mrs. Thomas, will you call the roll first on the suspension of the rules? Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Wiseman? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Wise? Aye. Okay, and then on the main motion. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mrs. Wiseman? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Wise? Aye. Okay, very good. Ordinance passes. Uh, next is uh, item F of uh, Ordinance 2018-76 for current and other expenditures of the City of University Heights, Ohio for the period commencing January 1, 2019 and ending March 31, 2019 on emergency. 
Uh, comments from Mr. Goff. The uh, temporary appropriations provide funds for operations between January 1, 2019 and no later than March 31, 2019. These temporary appropriations are based upon pro rata of the most recent draft of the 2019 permanent appropriations. Generally, the ratio used to prorate the appropriations is one half or one third. Uh, there is an Excel attachment, but the, the temporary appropriations do not include funds for the 2019 capital items. Any capital items without a 2018 carryover purchase order with required supplemental temporary appropriations uh, when the capital item is approved. Oh, will require, rather, supplementary uh, temporary appropriations when the capital item is approved. Okay. okay. That's... That would be the sentence. Okay. So um, uh, we, we spoke on this uh, at the previous meeting that, that um, uh, b between just the time crunch and then uh, Mr. Goff's unfortunate accident with his foot, that, that the uh, better course would be to, to do temporary appropriations into the new year and work on the budget once uh, Mr. Goff is quite literally back on his feet. So uh, that is, in, in short, what this is all about. Are there any questions or comments, discussion? Mayor. Yes. I'd just like to point out that um, if you look back at the temporary appropriations with which we started this year, mm -hmm. Mr. Goff's temporary appro appropriations are actually about $3 million less. So he's cut it much more closely looking at the budget because we started this year with 10376242 in temporary appropriations. So just as a matter of interest. I think he's doing a very good job looking at the numbers and looking at the actual numbers that will be needed. Yes. Of course, there's no capital in there, as was mentioned. Right, that is correct. <clears throat> Anything further? Mark. Mark, Mr. Wiseman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I have a couple questions. If nobody knows the answers to this, I'm still willing to move forward, but there are, this is for the first three months of the year, but there are several items that, that are summertime only items, the pool, some recreation, concerts, and entertainment. Well, and that may also be because some of those things are, are, are committed early on. We start, we are already talking to bands. We already have a meeting with uh, some meetings next week with regard to that. There will be expenses regarding the pool that will have to be expended well before May uh, when it comes to um, uh, what we do over there. I mean, yeah, we're not hiring lifeguards at this point, but right, right, right. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Anything else? Okay. Oh, Mrs. Weiss. Also, I'm not sure if you know this, but when it says prisoner housing costs, does this mean Solon? Yes. Because we don't have a. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so we're, we're re still in Solon and probably will be for a while to come, especially in light of other options not really being so um, appropriate. So, uh, if I may, yes. actually that was my other question. So this, the amount for Solon, that's basically, the, uh, the charge for Solon I think was $80,000 with the contract. Mm -hmm. that's this like is half. for 40, even though it's the first three months of the year. Uh, so I don't, yeah. I don't know whether we have to pay that at the, the first three months or, but if it was a exact prorated share, that means we would be paying Solon of course. 60, which is not huh. this is what we had talked about. Right. Okay. We could speak to him after. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, we could always adjust that at the first meeting of the of the year too. Uh, I mean, we're going to be back here on January seventh, and we won't spend forty thousand dollars in the first week. Well, and if I may just say, sure. it's a budget. <clears throat> Budgets are always projections. They're estimates. Because the money's there doesn't mean it will be spent. So he may be projecting up. I don't know if there's some additional cost that no. is due to Solon if we go over a certain number of people. I don't recall the specifics. But again, a budget is just an estimate. It doesn't mean we must spend that money. And I, perhaps it's not fair just to take this and multiply everything by four and say that's what the yearly budget is. I, I, no, I, I think, you know, w the thing that makes sense is for um, the administration not to have to come back to council with the need for additional appropriations. So it makes sense to err on the side of appropriating a little more 
than would be required during the first third of the year. Um, so that in the event of some unanticipated expense, um, they don't have to come back asking for another appropriation. Yeah, I'm just wondering if there isn't some other line item where that cost ended up being, uh, but it's not jumping out at me. So that is something that, uh, well, that's something we can consult with Mr. Goff about. However, this is our last meeting of the calendar year. So we don't want to go into the new year without anything. Like I said, I'm mm -hmm. more than ready to pass this. It just okay. that sort of jumped out at me. And maybe Mr. Goff, after seeing this video, will <laughs> proceed to his rehab with all due speed and make it back. <laughs> he can tell us what for about the budget. Plans. It will inspire that foot <laughs> to heal. <laughs> okay. Anything further? Is there a motion? Well, Mayor, oh, oh, go ahead, Pam. Oh, I was just going to uh, suggest that we adopt the ordinance 2018-76 for current and other expenditures of the City of University Heights for the period commencing January 1st and ending March 31st of 2019 on emergency. Okay, we'll take that as a motion. And is there a second? Second. Okay, a motion by Mrs. Cameron on emergency with a second by Mrs. Weiss. Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, uh, Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll first on the suspension of the rules. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Weissman? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. And on the main motion. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Weissman? Aye. Mrs. Pardee? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Okay. All right. Uh, ordinance passes. Motion passes. So, uh, our next item is item G, motion to hold an executive session immediately following this regular meeting for the purpose of discussing personnel, legal, and other real estate matters. Well, at this time, I don't have anything that I believe we need to go into executive session about if there's somebody here who uh, has something otherwise. Know or know something otherwise that requires an executive session, then speak up. Otherwise, I'm going to suggest that we not hold one this evening. Aye. <laughs> Holiday gift. All right. Thank you. Yes, it's a festivus miracle. <laughs> and it's 7:55. Wow. All right. Well, we still have some reports to get through, so uh, uh, we'll go to the director's reports. And, and the first item is the finance director's report uh, I have for Mr. Goff just briefly. Uh, on health insurance, on December 5, 2018, Dan Finland of NFP, the city's health insurance broker and finance associate Denise Ballant held a meeting with city staff members to review the health insurance renewal and to kick off the open enrollment period. Open enrollment will continue through Friday, December 21st, 2018. So that is this Friday. Uh, the fire department ladder truck. The city is proceeding with paperwork required by Leasing to Inc. for the financing of the 2019 Sutfen heavy duty 100 foot mid mount aerial ladder for the fire department. Mm. Resolution 2018-74 is part of the documentation required by Leasing to Inc. That refers to the resolution you've passed a few minutes ago. Next uh, is the implementation of VIP fusion accounting and payroll system. The finance department is working on the implementation of the new accounting system. The general ledger for general accounting is, is expected to go live on January 1, 2019. The switch of payroll processing from ADP to the new accounting system is not expected to occur until February of 2019. Due to the switch between accounting systems, council should expect in January 2019 to see a supplement to the temporary appropriations in order to reappropriate carryover fund balances associated with carryover 2018 purchase orders. And that would conclude Mr. Goff's report. Next would be Director of Law, Mr. McConnell. Uh, council, I want to give you a brief update on um, the uh, proposed uh, traffic signal project that will um, be going in at um, Cedar and Cedar and Green, correct? Speedway. Yes, yes. Cedar and Green. Yes, Cedar um, and Green. 
blanking there for a minute. Um, as you may recall, we um, had a, an appraisal done for the small portion um, of land that we will need to take in order to in install those new traffic signals. Um, and in correspondence with um, applicable Ohio law, we have sent Speedway um, a letter that um, indicates to them that we plan on appropriating that property that has provided them with a copy of the appraisal and that has uh, made a formal offer uh, to acquire the property for the amount of the appraisal. Um, we did that back in October um, and we've had uh, back and forth email correspondence with the Speedway representative who has claimed to be having to deal with internal bureaucracy there, um, but we have not heard back from them. And the reason I'm letting you know that is because um, we have given them a deadline at the end of the year to let us know um, as to whether or not they want to accept our offer. If they do, that's great. If they don't, we'll be filing an eminent domain action um, either in the first or second week of the year so that we have the property under title um, in a time frame that allows us to move forward with that project. So I will keep you posted on that. Um, we're hopeful that Speedway will um, accept our offer because again, it's based on an appraisal and the, and the parcel itself is very small. So we're not talking about large dollar amounts here. It certainly wouldn't make economic sense to anyone uh, to have to litigate this, but um, if they don't agree, we don't have any other option. So. Okay. And that concludes my report. All right. Very good. Thank you, Mr. McConville. Any questions for Mr. McConville? Okay. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so we're buying, we're appropriating the corner? Correct. Of their lot? Yeah, and it's actually um, a portion of the pro a property that has been used in the past, although not by us. We, we never engaged in any taking, but the county has um, installed some of their equipment there. Um, so it's not really going to look all that different, but we are, um, we are acquiring it for our use at this point for new signals. We're talking eight about, eight yeah, not even. Yeah, I don't think it's even that big. It, it's a fraction, fraction of an acre. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not going to affect their business. It's not going to close down the speedway. No, it's not going to impact their site plan whatsoever. Exactly. And I'm guessing that property we're we're going to they're going to still be able to use it. The property we're taking for the signals. Like a yeah, it's not going, again, it's not, it's not going to impact their use of their site. It's not something um, we're using now. Correct. It's not like we're going to put a pump by, uh, or a pole, pole by pump three and you won't be able to use it anymore. It's not like that. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really believe, and I don't think this is speaking out of turn in, in open session, that this is sort of found money for them. Um, the fact that it's not already under um, University Heights control is a little bit surprising um, to me, uh, but it is what it is. Um, we've walked through the process. There is an appraisal um, that we believe is is certainly fair. So we'll see what happens. Did we redo those all those lights, all those um, traffic lights when we redid the intersection five or ten years ago, maybe? We put in new lights. They were hanging now on poles. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Or the county. I think the county. I, it must have been the county. Yeah. I don't think it was us. I'm just good to clarify what it is because people here eminent domain they get nervous. We're not like. Yeah, no. This is not. not this lot. is. No. Uh, that's th true. There really well, is not anything about this that's it. aggressive. It, yeah. Yeah. They're not. They're, like Luke said, this doesn't change their site plan at all. They're not going to lose a parking space. They're not going to lose any place where anybody would drive or any place where, where Speedway conducts its business. Great. So this is, it's much more technical than it is otherwise uh, uh, impactful. Correct. One, 
Okay. Anything else for Mr. McConnell? All right. Uh, we will move on to public safety. Uh, Police Chief Dustin Rogers. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Good evening. I've got two items to report on tonight. Before I get into my report, I'd like to discuss further uh, and provide some clarity related to the solo jail contract because it was just recently discussed. Uh, we have started year two of a two-year contract in November for solo jail services, which is $82,000 per year. We get billed monthly on that contract, and every month we also get billed for uh, extra costs related to medications needed for prisoners, which on average uh, is an additional about $100 a month. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that being said, there is also contract language that acknowledges that if we reach certain benchmarks or go over certain numbers pertaining to the number of prisoners or the hours that prisoners are at the location, uh, we would have additional charges. I was recently informed that we have reached those benchmarks, so we will be charged an additional $10,000 for this year and likely at this current rate uh, unless we can negotiate the terms for the current contract, which we're discussing will have an additional $10,000 for next year as well. So that may, and, and the finance director has been made aware of that, so that may have played a part in some of uh, the appropriations for next year. Okay, Alan, thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. First item I'd like to report on is uh, resignation and hiring update. Uh, last Monday, we were given notice of a resignation of one of our administrative assistants who uh, is planning on resigning on January 4th. Uh, since that time, we've been working uh, to hopefully fill the position uh, with expectations to fill the position by the end of January. So that's ongoing at this time. Uh, also, we still have two remaining police officer positions that are open and we are still conducting background checks for those. Okay. Next item is pertaining to the frontline electronic parking permission beta program that we've been testing for the past two months. Uh, I've gotten information again recently that the testing has gone very well. It appears to be a program that can fit the needs of the community uh, while also allowing us to uh, mitigate excessive use for parking permissions. So um, other departments in the Heights Hill Crest Communication Center network have started to roll this uh, pro program out beyond the beta phase and um, the feedback has been very positive. <coughs> so we are looking at likely the first week of January to roll this program out. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to fine tune the parameters that allow us to regulate the use of parking permission and more information will be available at that time. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Any questions for Chief Rogers? All right. Very good. Thank you, Chief Rogers. Uh, next up is Chief Perko for the fire department. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. I just want to report um, as a follow-up from the last meeting on our coloring contest winners. Um, we had two winners. They earned a free ride in the fire truck to school. <laughs> However, both candidates are homeschooled. Oh, no. So we decided we were going to give them a tour of the city in the fire truck. That's right. um, one of them scheduled for from yesterday and uh, there's some photos online of, of their tour and the next one will be uh, this coming Sunday and then we'll get the, the winner's drawings and uh, either post them in the firehouse or perhaps in council chambers as Councilman Wiseman suggested. Uh, update on our new hires. Um, we're in the second week this week of four of them that we started recently. They're in their second week of our onboarding program. And then the remaining candidates, we are still doing background checks and interviews. Um, we've selected someone for our administrative position. Uh, we're also pending background checks on that as well. An update to the um, FEMA grant application that you approved at the last meeting. We'll be submitting that this week for the uh, smoke detector program. That concludes my report. Okay, thank you, Chief Perko. Does anybody have any questions for Chief Perko? All right, seeing none, thank you, Chief. Next is Service Department, Mr. Picorni. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as the Mayor reported earlier, leaves are continuing and uh, we will continue as long as weather, uh, personnel, and equipment allow us. So uh, I ask for everybody's patience. 
Uh, hopefully the weather will hold out and we will make another round of the city. But uh, we have not quite completed our eighth round yet. As the mayor indicated, his street has not been done. Raymont, uh, the north uh, western portion of the city has not been completed yet also. They're currently working around uh, the John Carroll area, Milford, Conover, and uh, Washington Boulevard. Uh, second item, trees. We received notice from Parks Tree. That's the contractor who was awarded the contract for this winter's pruning project. Uh, he will be starting next week. So he will be starting on Saybrook around Traymore, working his way south down uh, Saybrook. And then he will be doing the next couple of blocks, moving westward um, over to Eaton will be the last street in that group of streets. So. It will take uh, a good three months to go through all of those trees, pruning, and uh, that's my work. Okay. Very good. Uh, are there any questions for Mr. Picorni? Yes. I have a question. Okay, Mrs. Cameron, go. Yeah. I wanted to know, mm -hmm. um, maybe I want to know it as a mayor, mm -hmm. but does this whole leaf business not pose to be somewhat of an impediment to day-to-day -day operation? Um, as the mayor indicated earlier, it actually works the other way. Um, we make sure that we get our regular routine garbage collection and those items done first with our personnel, and then we assign uh, what we have remaining to the leaf collection. So if we have three uh, enough people and personnel and, uh, and equipment, and the weather's nice enough, we can get out three crews doing leaves. Uh, often we only have two and today because of Monday rubbish and a lot of special pickups and other things that we have to take care of We were only able to get one crew out today yeah. but So one crew takes care of how many the one crew today accomplished getting uh, Conover uh, Meadowbrook from uh, Cedar to uh, Glendon and a portion of uh, Meadowbrook up to uh, Miramar. So that, that's what one crew was able to accomplish. It was a fairly small stretch of streets. Plus it's very heavy right now. Uh, as soon as we get this pass completed, uh, the speed of the crews will pick up quite a bit because they won't be doing long uh, piles the entire length of the street. They'll only be doing piles that are, that are spot piles. Okay. So I the progress will increase. I imagine it. I guess I'm just trying to figure out a, a different way to, to approach the whole leaf situation. And I've been informed by a long-term resident that there were years here that the city didn't, e didn't even pick up leaves. <laughs> that there was no vacuum truck, there was nothing other than the residents' responsibility to bag and collect whatever leaves they needed to. So there are other communities, such as Mentor, where they do not vacuum leaves off the, uh, off the tree lawns. You have to bag them. Uh, that has not been the case here for many years. We've had the leaf vacuums here for many years. Okay. There have been years, however, where the snows came early. You know, you had a, yeah. a heavy two foot of snow first week in November. Right. And November they were buried, and they stayed that way, buried throughout the winter until we could pick them up again in the spring. Right. Mm -hmm. Is there an ordinance? Do we have an ordinance that covers the leaf collection? There's an ordinance indicating that you may not pile your leaves in the street. There is not an ordinance requiring that you rake your leaves. And there is also no ordinance that requires you to leave the leaves on, on the tree lawn. You're, any time of year, you're welcome to bag your leaves. And for those residents who are fastidious and, uh, and the possibility of leaves being on their tree lawn for a month offends them. They they are free to bag their leaves and, and leaves and craft bags will be picked up roughly the same day as your regular trash pickup. So uh, if you do that, then they'll be gone a lot faster. It's more work. Um, you know, the, the 
leaf back is an added value and added service we do in this community. But there have been times um, this this season, especially with how the leaf, how they fell this year and so on, and some of the limitations uh, that, uh, you know, th there has to be a question as to, uh, are you delivering the service effectively? And I know that, that the, that, that, that the men in the service department are working very hard, you know, when they're here to, to deliver effective service. Uh, and we've had, you know, as I mentioned earlier, 22 straight days of leaf collection, basic, basically since the Monday after Thanksgiving, uh, we've done leaf collection seven days a week. And not, not three crews every day, because, you know, because, we, right, you know, we're never going to, well, well, there are, they've, they've, yeah, but we're not going to, uh, uh, you know, we're never going to say, sorry, Wednesday trash people, you, 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 we're skipping you this week because we're doing leaves. No, that's, that's never a thing. That won't be a thing. So trash will always get picked up and, you know, we'll be out salting and snowing as, as her clearing snow rather is needed. And, and it, when the leaves were covered in snow, it was slower going. And if people put sticks in the leaves and they get caught in the tube, that, that slows things down too, because then they gotta remove the tube and clear it out. And, and uh, I don't, people may not realize how much that slows things down. Okay. But yes, okay. uh, there are a number of things I'm looking at. I don't wanna get lost in the weeds here and go into all of them just now, but uh, I will be taking a look here and, and, and making some suggestions there, there'll be some things I'm gonna, I can implement administratively early next year to set us up for uh, a different way of going about this perhaps, or you know, not really different, we're not gonna stop vacuuming, but, but a different uh, approach to it, as well as uh, some other ideas of things we could be doing, especially when it comes to uh, parking. Uh, if you are parked on the street in front of a leaf pile, there is no picking up those leaves. Yeah, and we end up skipping over you. And we've had a lot of resident complaints. Well, I understand the, the leaf crew was on my street, but my leaves are still here. Yeah, well, there was a, a truck parked in front of your tree lawn and it was in the way. We couldn't do your leaves and we're not gonna be back until we finish up the rest of the city. And that's, you know, it's, it's all in fairness and it's a big picture, you know, macro way of doing this. And, and we do plan on having another pass, weather permitting, but, but there may be something we can do. And I've studied what some other communities do and there, we could do a parking ban uh, or, you know, not citywide, but, uh, but a parking ban on select streets that we believe are coming up shortly. And, and just say that from eight to four, the, the, the operating hours, that we uh, don't allow street parking, so that we are sure that, or that, the, so that we're sure that the leaf crews uh, have unfettered access. All right, Miss <laughs> um, McCorner, is there been any overtime issues or additional expenses that have been incurred due to the leaf? Situation? Absolutely, as the mayor indicated, uh, we have been working seven days a week, and that does require overtime. So we've been uh, we've been pushing the weekends to try to get things done while the weather was nice, and uh, yeah, there will be extra money. Uh, okay, um, and this year I have not heard that we've had any manpower complaints or issues as it related to hiring. Are you referring to the use of temporary workers? For the use of temporary workers to pick up leads. We, we did come to council. We authorized a contract with Minutemen uh, Staffing Services, and we are utilizing those people in that contract. Great, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Very good, thank you, Mrs. Cameron. Any further questions for Mr. McCorney? All right, thank you. Did you want to give any heads up on gas line project? Uh, I, you know, why don't we wait until we okay. yeah. get a schedule and find out. We'll get a schedule. All right. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McCoy. All right. Uh, next is uh, Building Commissioner, Mr. McReynolds. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Thank members you. of Council. Happy holidays. Happy. On December 5th, 
uh, the building committee met and the discussion revolved around rentals. Um, the uh, residents were encouraged to come forward and discuss rental problems, perhaps in their neighborhood, or that they were acquainted with. And uh, some of the ideas that came out of that were um, parking issues, landscaping, and complaints about noise and garbage. On December 12th, uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals met. There was no new business, uh, only renewals. On December 12, uh, 13th, rather, the uh, Architectural Review Board met. There were four cases, one of which is uh, new signs that were approved for the McDonald's drive throughs uh, These will be LED type signs, not backlit. It should reduce the amount of glare coming from these signs, uh, very similar to the type of menus that they have already on the interior. Um, uh, December 13th, we also had a MICVA pre-construction meeting. This is regarding the street opening, which is planned to occur uh, possibly the second week in January. This will take approximately two weeks to complete. And uh, this involves coordination between the uh, police, fire department, service department, and our city engineer as well. On uh, January 3rd, we have a planning commission uh, meeting scheduled. And on a personal note, I meant, might mention that during this past year, I renewed my certifications for building official, residential building official, and electrical safety inspector. These are now uh, good until the year 2021. And finally, uh, to mention that uh, we are doing some house cleaning now during the slow time of year for building inspections and that. And we will mention this uh, hopefully with Mike's Cook assistance on our webpage. Uh, our inspectors are going out and we're cleaning up the old reports. So you may see a yellow inspection ticket in your mailbox or on your door, someplace where you can see it. Even though it's unexpected, it doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong. It will usually mean that we were there, we were looking at something, we've either approved it or, or haven't approved it, but usually it will mean that we've approved it. Okay, do you have any questions? Okay, thank, thank you. you, Mr. McReynolds. Any questions for Mr. McReynolds? Glasses. You like them or no? <laughs> yeah. I like them. I think they're sure. Yeah. They're they're functional. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rick Reynolds. Uh, next is City Engineer Mr. Chuni. Mr. Chuni uh, is in Beechwood this evening at their council meeting. There is a. Uh, uh, a, a retirement happening of somebody who he's worked with a long time and he wanted to pay his uh, respects and we were happy that he could go and, and do that. So he, he is uh, not here. Uh, however, um, if he were, what I could probably say with respect to um, something coming from engineering would be that today I happened to sign off on the plans uh, for Warrensville Center Road and I'm happy to uh, say that even though it's taken a lot longer since you know, January doing what I thought was a fairly small tweak, which turned out to be uh, catch ODOT's attention for a little bit more review. Uh, long story short, the, the, the mid-block crossings and the new bicycle lanes on Warrensville Center Road will be underway next year, and I'm really looking forward to having them. So uh, that is finally moving along. <laughs> Uh, next, communications and civic engagement. Mr. Cook. Thank you. Good evening. I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to focus on just one project that I'm working on, which is the city magazine. Uh, the writing of the articles and the design for the February issue has already begun. I want to you know, get a, a head start on this. So uh, we make a big splash with the first issue. And obviously, you know, if things are done at the last second, the rush and that's how mistakes get made. So I just, I think we're on the right track with this. The cover story uh, tentatively is going to be on the CRA. We're also going to have a spread on the beautiful homes. Uh, we're going to do a Q and A with a city official. Each issue uh, for the first issue, it's going to be Chief Perko talking about the Fire Prevention Bureau. We're going to focus on a local restaurant in each issue. So the the mayor and the first lady are going to review 
uh, local restaurants. We're going to have our business spotlight in there. I'm working with uh, Susan Drucker on that. And finance, excuse me, yeah, uh, business spotlight I'm working with Susan on. And also uh, the business directory will be in there as well. So that's it. That's quite a lot. Okay. Well, that's it. That sounds like that's a it. lot. <laughs> There's more, but those are the ones that are in yeah. progress. And again, a part of the reason for why I'm getting it laid out early is just, you know, want to get the, the main articles in there first and then figure out how much space we have left. And obviously, the magazine's going to be a little bit bigger if ad sales go really well. For the most part, we're mm -hmm. playing on 28 pages each issue, but, you know, if ad sales um, exceed expectations, mm -hmm. you know, we'll have to you know, four more pages, three will be ads, and then one more will be an additional article. Yeah. Just something to mention so it doesn't sound quite as frivolous as it, as it might. Uh, my, my wife used to write uh, food reviews for Northern Ohio Live. In fact, I remember reading her food reviews before I even met her. And then I met the woman behind that glowing review of my orca. <laughs> so, so um, I'm really looking forward to getting to do that. And I'm real, and I'm really just along for the ride. <laughs> so, yeah. okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Were there any questions for Mr. Cook? All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next is uh, economic development, Mrs. Drucker. Council. This will be um, just a quick report tonight. Uh, Patrick and I are continuing to work on the zoning code, even though we're focusing on the mixed use district right now. Uh, the entire zoning code, it will be a lengthy process and a project we're going to continue working on through next year. Um, also, I've been working with the Small Business Administration on lending options that will be specific to uh, University Heights businesses. So that is something that uh, I attended a seminar last week and then I'm meeting with a representative and then we're going to create some, uh, see what we can come up with for the businesses in the city. That's it, that's my report, and okay. Happy New Year to everyone. Great, thank Great. you, Mrs. Drucker. Does anybody have any questions for Mrs. Drucker? Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next is community development, Mr. Grogan Myers. Thank you, Mike, Mayor. Uh, a few things to report on tonight. Um, today, 23 letters went out to owners of tax delinquent parcels. Um, this is a similar letter to what we had sent out um, back in May. And at that time, that letter and this letter that we just sent out today uh, referenced that you've got a delinquent property tax balance um, and we refer you to the county to either make a payment plan or make the full payment to uh, settle up with the county. Uh, the goal of this is to intervene early on in the process to try to avoid tax lien certificate sales or tax foreclosure. Um, that spring mailing, uh, like I said, which was sent out in uh, late May, resulted in collections of almost $90,000 in delinquent taxes and penalties. Um, so the 23 letters that were sent out represent about $220,000 in taxes and penalties due. Um, so we should know probably by early next year about what the, the product of this round of letters uh, has yielded. Uh, secondly, I'm working with my inspectors to do a comprehensive overview of all of our housing programs, um, seeing what's working, what's not, and what do we need to tweak. So uh, that's expected to be complete by the end of December um, with some changes to be made early next year. Uh, third, actually uh, hot off the press, earlier tonight um, we activated our GIS uh, software. So uh, I will be working with our planning intern, Brendan Zach, uh, who is very fond, as I, I am too, of GIS. So we'll be working to build the city's in-house GIS um, for, across all departments, see how we can be helping in that area. Um, and finally, if you've driven by the, the Cedar-Taylor intersection lately, uh, you might have noticed a change. Um, I tried to get it up on the screen, but figured this might be easier. Um, so uh, what's coming around is a packet uh, with a couple photographs. So the first page is um, an overview of the KFC parcel. Um, and uh, part of that parking lot has been on city properties in city right of way for uh, quite some time. And so the city uh, went forward and had that portion of the parking lot demolished or taken out. Um, so in a series of before and afters, you'll see the parking lot that was removed um, and it will be restored to green grass here in the spring. 
Uh, so I, we've been in talks with the Cedar Tail Emergence Association um, so that one, they're aware of the construction that was going on, or the demolition, rather, um, that the grass will be planted in the spring. Um, and it also presents an opportunity for maybe some programming um, or maybe some future development of some sort. So just making that, that slow and steady progress. Yes, so. yes. Now, I've been out to observe the, the area, and it's, um, <coughs> you know, it, it really stands out once you're there, and you can see how much of our land we're reclaiming <coughs> and asserting our, you know, control over, and, and that's really going to open up that area for uh, for city use, as, as it should be. Yes. And, and uh, the feedback that I've gotten from the merchants on both sides of the street has been overwhelmingly positive that we're taking this step. Well, and it, it couldn't have been done without the help of uh, our economic development director, Susan Drucker. Um, we really kind yes. of tag teamed on this, so really appreciate her help through all of this and working with the businesses. So. Yes. So that's all I have. Okay, very good. Any questions for Mr. Grogan Myers? Yes. Mrs. Cameron. Uh, sir, is there, uh, I'm, I'm sure there isn't yet, but I want you to begin to consider uh, what it might take to have a first time home buying flyers program here. If you want to give me some money, I'd be happy to, <laughs> to start a program. Yeah. Well, I got about five, six, seven hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> from various sources. Got a beautiful beach in Florida for you then. Um, no, so so a lot of those um, a lot of those programs are funded in other cities by CDBG funds. Um, okay. They're they're actually entitlement communities. You'll find a lot of times so Cleveland Heights, Euclid, Cleveland, um, and and they're substantial programs. So I'm happy to to look into what that might entail, um, but it, it does require a substantial amount of money. Like how much substantial? Well, most of those entitlement cities are receiving over a million dollars or so give or take a million dollars in entitlement um, from the federal government, so, for various purposes, but. So, what, what can our local banks do to help out with that? That's a great question. <laughs> I, I'd be happy to, to start looking into it. Well, in your spare time. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so we need about a million. All right. Just <laughs> Thanks. Put on the list. Yes. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Cameron. Does anybody else have anything for Mr. Grogan Myers? Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Grogan Myers. Uh, that would conclude our director's reports from administration. We will now move to reports from standing committees. Building, uh, Mr. Wiseman. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We had a uh, building committee meeting where we heard from uh, residents of the city to hear what their concerns are uh, in terms of whether or not they uh, wanted to let city council know about um, whether their property and or lives were being affected by, uh, by um, rental properties close by them. Uh, we received a uh, smattering of comments. There was a robust debate. Uh, several, uh, several of the people there wanted to be heard several times even though they had the same kind of thing to tell us each time. We heard many times from a number of individuals. Um, uh, and the complaints were all centered around um, uh, perceived landscaping uh, deficiencies, uh, parking issues, um, uh, and different uh, areas in terms of noise. Uh, I don't know, I, I didn't really expect to hear much else from residents because residents don't deal with uh, sort of the realities that, uh, that council does. Uh, I've heard for, I heard from, there were several landlords there and I've heard from several landlords since uh, and they urge us to, to take their suggestions into consideration. Uh, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, we're taking, taking each of their suggestions into consideration, except for the suggestion that we just don't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that will not be the case. Uh, we're uh, at some point, I think it'll put forth some new legislation for the council to look at. I uh, appreciate the residents' uh, concerns and willingness to come sit, and I really appreciate my colleagues' uh, desire to 
hear more and more about this. Uh, I think Councilwoman Weiss pointed out that this was our seventh meeting mm -hmm. that we've had uh, on this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, I, I don't imagine anybody can accuse us of not doing our homework on this. Although, we'll see. Maybe, maybe somebody will, but look for that after the first of the year, some type of new legislation dealing with uh, the issues that we have. I appreciate the administration's willingness to work with us and to be patient uh, during this process. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wiseman. Uh, civic information, Mrs. Cameron. Okay. I have a fairly lengthy set of comments I'd like to make. Um, but I think you all will understand why I'm asking for your indulgence. Um, first of all, I want to do this right in the beginning of my comments. I don't want to wait till the end. But I want to thank uh, Chief Rogers and his staff as I experienced the loss of my mom and he and the Southview Blue Police Department were very instrumental in helping me um, get there, get to her home and helped through the process. <laughs> and life being what it is and with uh, all the thoughts that could run through your mind when they called, I was very, I, I knew what the reason was that they called me to the door. However, my mind took a, took, it just went off in a different, totally different direction. And my feeling at the time as I was heading down the steps was, I felt like I was being taken by the police in a similar way that I'm expecting will happen to President Trump. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, and I remember thinking, wow, they are so thorough, and they were so cautious, and they were so helpful, and they were cautious in terms of how I was getting down the stairs, and how I was able to get into the car without falling out and tripping or anything. They were just courteous and kind, and everything that you would expect, and I wished I'm going to wish for President Trump's uh, similar experience, if and when he's ever escorted off the public stage. But it was, it was a fairly surreal experience. And I have to also say that I work with the best human beings possible and my fellow colleagues, my council colleagues, as well as the mayor and the clerk of courts. I can't even describe the level of support that they have provided to me. I can't tell you all how grateful I am for the efforts that you all have made on my behalf. So, and I'd also like to thank the South Euclid Police for their kindness and their consideration through a very difficult and very trying evening. But people have been funny and supportive and encouraging and I really couldn't help ask for a better outcome, as it were. So I will leave these comments at this point. I um, 
wanted to comment on some some negativity that's happened, but I don't feel in the mood for that today. So I'm going to leave that part go. But as it relates to our city business, uh, I would hope that um, I can have everyone's support in talking with the council clerk to give her your availability for our, our committee meeting that we need to have, hopefully, <coughs> in the next few weeks or so concerning the um, move to amend okay. legislation uh, that all the council has asked that we refer back to committee. So I'm hoping that everyone would have about 30 minutes of time. I think we could wrap all of that up in about 30 minutes of meeting. And so that, just so that we can give our city residents an opportunity to come and speak on the issue. And then we'll be prepared to move on. So, okay. We're going to get right there. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Cameron. Sure. And you're welcome. Next, uh, finance, uh, Mrs. Purdy. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we haven't set the meetings yet, but I'll work with the clerk. We will set meetings on either Tuesdays or Thursdays in January, um, and I'll get the dates out to you before the end of this year. Thank you. Oh, uh, this is for the budget, obviously. Yes, yes, <laughs> right. Thank you, Mrs. Purdy. Um, the governmental affairs, Mrs. Weiss. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we had a meeting last week about raising the age from 18 to 21 to purchase tobacco and vaping products. Um, many large cities have done this in Ohio, Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati, and also other smaller cities, Lakewood, Cleveland Heights. Um, vaping is a new kind of entry level kind of thing to cigarette smoking, and it's it's getting advertised um, to, to young adults, to young teenagers, actually. So um, this, this, after discussing it in the committee, um, an ordinance will be presented to council in the next one or two meetings. Thank you, Mrs. Weiss. Recreation, Mr. Ertl's not here, but does anybody have a report from recreation? Okay. Seeing none, safety, Mr. Rock. Yes, Mayor, we had a meeting two weeks ago on December 5th um, to discuss um, police department and fire department and some of their goals for the department in uh, the upcoming year. We also discussed uh, the park uh, with regard to leash laws. Um, there's many dogs throughout our park that just kind of run wild without a leash. So there is a ordinance on the books right now. So we talked about enforcing that ordinance. Um, we talked about signage. We need better signage for the park because some people don't know the rules. Um, so this would give us the opportunity to at least tell the community uh, what those rules are. We discussed park hours. Right now, the community park actually doesn't have park hours posted. So we discussed the, the dawn until dusk um, policy, and that would be on a, a new sign as well. Um, and some other odds and ends throughout the, the police department. Um, and then we also discussed, um, Chief Perko discussed some of his goals for the fire department um, with regard to the community risk reduction goals um, and other fire prevention and mitigation strategies. So we discussed some of those things. Um, and yeah, it's a very good meeting and we'll, we'll have another one again soon. Thank you, Mr. Rock. Next is service and utilities. Mr. Sims is not here this evening. Does anybody have a report on behalf of this committee? Seeing none, uh, that leaves us with committee of the whole. Mrs. Party, anything? No, thank you, Mayor. Okay, very good. Well, this concludes uh, the regular portion of the meeting. There is no executive session this evening, so uh, um, uh, before I take the motion to adjourn, thank you all for being here. It's been a uh, good first year, if I may say so. <laughs> Looking forward to year two, and we'll see you next year. Is there a motion uh, to adjourn?
So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Mr. Wiseman, second by Mr. Rock. Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Wiseman? Aye. Mrs. Cardini? Aye. Mrs. Cameron? Aye. Mrs. Wise? Aye. See you next year. Thank you.